When you're looking at the people who are maintaining your aircraft, you want to make sure they have the highest level of professionalism and training available. You have pilots that fly and maintain control, but to uh, maintain the integrity of the aircraft, it's the aerospace technicians, whether it's a mechanic, an avionics, an interior specialist, a structural specialist, they all have a key part in the safety of the aircraft. It took us almost 12 months to find two technicians that were qualified to, to do what we required them to do. I think the uh, forecast is for about a 100% increase in uh, the global fleet of aircraft, again, between now and 2030, which with our current status in, in the terms of available maintenance technician, uh, most of us will be passed away and or retired, uh, and those coming into the industry won't even touch the, uh, uh, the aircraft that are in service. So we have, to, uh, we have to increase our numbers. So with this committee, we're going to try to establish standards that are, uh, reflect what today's technology is, not what the technology was 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And with that, we want to bring young people in and show them that, that there's uh, you know, real uh, opportunities. And you know, there are people in the industry today making six-figure incomes that are technicians and, and lead technicians. And, that's what we need. We need to get more aligned in our avionics because the jets of today fly by computer. So when you see a technician addressing an airplane issue, mostly he comes with a laptop instead of a wrench in his pocket. There wasn't anything that really defined that. And this process helped us to identify a pathway and career paths for students or people wanting to better themselves professionally. Consensus training standards are essential. We have to have everybody globally with a similar required basic knowledge. Business aircraft specifically, uh, in, in my case, have made the world a much smaller place. Having a standard globally, I mean, you could take somebody who's based here in the U.S., move them, you know, for a company, whether it be the same company or a different company somewhere else, and it's the same standard. They already know the job, they know what to follow it and what needs to be done. Consensus standards are important because we're trying to get to a globally recognized qualified aircraft technician within, within the aviation community. So on the F-46 committee, we've got manufacturers, we've got operators, we've got suppliers such as uh, myself. So it's a different wide range of you know, people that are there, so it's great to get the different input to create the standards that we're looking to. It's a tool to help define where this industry is going, where the technicians are going, elevate the professionalism, but elevate it also not only a national scale, but a global scale. Bringing together the regulatory aspect, bringing everybody together at a table where they really have a voice and can see an impact. In the future, we're going to be able to give technicians in various steps of our industry uh, a toolbox. We're going to actually certificate them, something that they can take with them. And in the meantime, the, the workforce is going to get a much better and broader based education and training. Yeah, I think that the work on the committee is, is vitally important. And I, I believe that we're, we're going to impact the aviation industry in a very positive manner because we're going to set new standards, new certification requirements, and we're going to bring all those into the industry through a collaboration of both uh, of government and industry together on a global scale.